Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Welcome to another evening of a Freelancer, Spice Lord, Linewalker, Ron Allen, and everybody else hanging out in chat. How's it going? We do have a slight change of plans for tomorrow. We had a couple of uh, pop-up events. So tomorrow, there's actually going to be a Nintendo Direct, and I think it's the first Nintendo Direct since, like, September. And it's also going to be near an hour long, so it's going to be, like, one of the longer ones they've done. So tomorrow night, we'll be checking out that Nintendo Direct. Then also tomorrow, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, the developers are doing some big event. Uh, I think it's talking about the next big patch for the early access and maybe even the release date. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to be, so we're going to watch that as well. So essentially tomorrow's stream might just be watching those two events and that'll be all our time. Hey, Devril, how's it going? And then of course we do have uh, BlizzCon on Friday. The opening ceremony is going to start at 4 o'clock p.m. Central. So we'll be covering that and several of the other Blizzard uh, little shows. Hey, Mirat. So yeah, this week kind of turned into a little mini E3, so to speak. And I think I'll be able to port all of those over to YouTube as well. Maybe. The BlizzCon stuff might be a little sketchy, but... Yeah, we'll see. Oh yeah, I heard about the um, I heard about that line walker. They actually released a video as well, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I've decided to not use the 1080 patch for freelancer. Can you um, link that again, Mirat? Because if there's a straight 1080 patch for freelancer, I can't find it. I've had like so many people link me things. That's like gotten lost. I know that New World, uh, which is the Amazon MMO, decided to uh, delay their game again. Actually, you know what? We could just watch that announcement right now since I have not seen it. Let's just do that. Hold on. Is that on YouTube? Let me see. Uh, New World. MMO. Mm, here we go. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Let's go ahead and... Ready, chat? No, no, Persona. Turn you down. Okay, yeah, let's watch uh well, watch this real quick. All right, do like right there. Click that button. Okay, what do we got? Hi there, I'm Scott Lane, game director on New World. I'm here to talk to you about our progress, our plans, and our launch date. So last summer, we communicated that New World would launch this spring and that the team was going to focus on adding more mid and end game content. Since then, we've identified a few very compelling features that just wouldn't make that time frame. And we believe these features are going to transform the game. So we're going to take the time to add them before we put New World in your hands. New World's going to launch August 31st, 2021. This gives us not only enough time to implement those features, but to tune and polish them along with the entire experience. Closed beta is going to be on July 20th, and I really hope some of you come take an early look at the game. I'd like to take a few minutes and share what we're going to be working on between now and launch. First, we're adding another endgame zone, Ebon Scale Reach. This is a territory of lush wetlands and towering cliffs very where an exiled empress is building a corrupted fleet that could be a threat to the entire world. Now onto those features. First one I want to talk about is Expeditions. These are five player instance adventures into the darkest corners of Eternum where players are going to face the most dire threats on the island and uncover more layers into the mysteries of the lore, including secrets behind the source of the corruption, the ulterior motives of the angry earth, and the deeper menace behind the soulless lost. 
So now I'd like to tell you just a little bit about Outpost Rush. Outpost Rush is an end game mode that calls players to a primordial river basin filled with forgotten ancient technologies and hidden sources of the powerful and volatile Azoth. Here you're gonna battle in 20 versus 20 teams over multiple strongholds, and you're gonna use strategic resources not only to fortify your positions, a but to boost gun. your power for assaults. Expeditions and Outpost Rush are big features for us leading up to launch, but we've also made a lot of progress since the preview event. I'm sure some of you have played or seen Reekwater, an endgame zone we added. We've also added fishing, we've done a full revamp to crafting, we added hundreds and hundreds of weapons and gear pieces. We've really improved combat. We've added a lot of quest variety. All of this is in direct response to your feedback from the preview. And let me tell you, there's a lot more to come. For those of you who played in the preview event, I think you're really going to enjoy the changes and additions we've made. Getting our mid and end game right is critical to the game experience and adding new features, it takes time. At the end of the day, shipping a high quality, polished experience is our top priority and we plan to do just that. Hmm, okay. Yeah, so um, for those who don't know, this is an MMO that is being done by Amazon or Amazon Game Studios. There has been a lot of chatter about Amazon gaming in general on how just like things have just not been going well for anything they've been trying to do. But yeah, this game was supposed to be essentially released already and they delayed it by basically a year almost. It's a lot of people that are thinking that it's not going to make that release date and they're going to delay it again. Uh, you sent that via Twitter. Okay, okay. But yeah, uh, as he mentioned in that video, there was a preview event and they let streamers actually stream that. And the overall feeling of the game was like very neutral. Like, not necessarily bad, not necessarily good. It's like there's some good things here and there, but just a lot of just like meh, pretty much. And that's why they delayed it was from all the feedback. So hopefully they are smart enough to uh, to do it properly. Uh, let me look at these things that uh, Murat linked to me here real fast. I think... Oh, boy. Yeah, I'll probably have to do this later. Okay. Well, the funny thing about that, Murat, is I've been trying to do a bunch of research because I, I do have some mods installed now. And when I tried to research, like resolution mods or anything like that i found nothing except for some stuff on reddit where people are saying the only way to do it is to go into like the ini ini files and mess with that stuff so i'm a little bit curious as to why these items don't pop up on a normal search and are not like on any of the major modding sites that i've seen Kind of interesting. Actually, uh, just for kicks, let's watch this video. This is another New World video that came out like 12 hours ago. I'm just kind of curious to see what they've done. New World's an open world MMO set in an alternate version of the 17th century that takes place on an island we call Eternum. It's a place of legend. It's a land of power and of treasure. It's a place where your choices matter. You get to live a life that is full of danger and adventure on a supernatural continent that has only just been discovered. We wanted to build this, this version of a haunted Eden. We wanted beautiful 
picturesque landscape. Yeah, it definitely looks danger nice. Danger around every turn. There's these hints of supernatural in these things that show you you're not really anywhere you've ever seen before. Contrast is something that we really want players to feel as they move around the world. Every space they enter feels different and special from the space behind it. They feel like every hill they're going over, there's a new adventure. Not many people know too much about Eternum yet. I think that's where you come in as a player. And there are threats, but there's also opportunity. Rumors swirl about the power and danger of the island, but the people who go there don't really know what they're going to find. It could be Shangri-La, or it could be something out of their worst nightmares. The thing that gives a turn of this, this power and makes it supernatural and special is there's this mineral that runs below the earth and it's called Azoth, and it's known to have magical properties. Azoth can amplify things. Azoth itself is, is not really a good or bad necessarily. It's just mm. this pure raw energy. Azoth has Well, power there's an undead deer. It makes things more beautiful. And deadly. Azoth is different for everyone who sees it or knows about it. For some, it's the fountain of youth. For some, it's the philosopher's stone. For some, it's the living embodiment of God or the devil. But one thing's for sure is it gives you, the player, a lot of really interesting powers to hmm. play with. When players arrive in Eternum, they find evidence of other civilizations having been trapped there throughout history. The whole world is open to you, and you're only limited by your skill and the difficulty of the enemies that you run into. It's completely classless, so you choose how you want to play by choosing the equipment, and the weapons you choose also defines your play style. Players will have a lot of freedom to choose what they do and how they do it. One of the I forgot about that. The new world has always been autonomy, and that manifests in every single system in the game. The game adapts to the player and their play style. Want to become the best blacksmith or the best sword fighter. The progression system supports that. They just have to keep doing what they do best. There's multiple settlements all over the world and the corruption is always this invasive, aggressive force that's constantly trying to push back, trying to drive players out. The corrupted have massive armies growing in the north and some of their influences are beginning to trickle down to the south where players are trying to build their homes and they have a very particular idea of how the power of Eternum should be used. The world is gonna push back against you in, in a couple of interesting ways. For one thing, as you grow more powerful and you head deeper into the world, obviously there's gonna be resistance to come up and meet you. But one of the most exciting things about the game is that as you and other players begin to form settlements and you begin to push back the things in the woods, they'll come for you. You're gonna find some really interesting battles that have to get fought in order to keep your foothold in this world. Gotta say, I am definitely more interested now. I just hope that they can make a successful game here and that it's not another disaster. Actually, there's one more video they released today. Let's watch that last one. We're kind of watching these out of order. I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not. But yeah, part of me is like, I really want there to be another big successful MMO that I can jump into. Watching this in 480. What awaits players when they first land on Eternum is a new discovery of a new world. When you first arrive on Eternum, you're going to be kind of at ground zero. Your ship has crashed. There's nobody around who's on your side. Pretty soon, you're going to start to meet other players, and you're going to start to understand that life on Eternum is very much a band together or die alone situation. When we create Eternum, I will die we alone. wanted to design and create a vast, explorable world. Players will quickly realize that nothing ever really dies in this island. No soul can leave the body. It is the magical resource that grants the power of immortality, and it is called Azoth. Wouldn't it be crazy if they created a hardcore MMO where if you actually died... 
you actually come back as the enemy and you have to stay as the enemy for the rest of the game. One of the things that makes the tournament very dangerous is that there's a bunch of different factions there and each one has their own objectives and desires and they conflict with each other, but more importantly, they create big conflicts with the player and dangers for them. Alongside the Corrupted, there's three other major enemy groups that exist. The Lost are the sort of soulless wretches of our game. They're people who have eternal life, but have it without a soul. And as you learn, that is not a, a pleasant fate. They're stuck in this sort of like half-death state because they've died in some horrific way, or sailors who have crash-landed on this island and sort of washed ashore here. They're the, the ghouls, the, the undead versions in our game. Angry Earth is the pure, natural power of the island fighting back against the people who have come to corrupt it. It's almost like, like the these island's guys are defense cool. system, and it will do whatever it can to expel these invaders. Nature is trying to imitate the form of humans or animals they see. And some are like more humanoid, but there's other ones that are more of like a constructed monstrosity. They amass themselves in order to fight back from what they consider is an infection. One of the civilizations that existed on Aeternum were known as the Ancients, and they had harnessed the power of Azoth. For the Ancients, they used it to power their technologies, and you'll see tributes to their society throughout the world. Something happened to the Ancients, and no one knows quite what happened. The remains of their civilization are there, and their secrets are there for you to discover. The character models all look really good. In Aeternum, the world fights back through the corrupted. So the corrupted notice the player, they notice them getting stronger and building up their settlements, and then they fight back. They it's might blockade a road, you know, have a summoning portal, which portals lots of enemies of their type into the player's area. You can take one of the territories on a turnip. You can ultimately grow your town to the point where not only the monsters in the woods want to take it from you, but other players as well. And when we have these massive wars over these territories, it's it's pretty special. Hmm. All right, there you go. I do find it really interesting that this is yet another MMO that is doing some pretty hardcore PvP stuff. Seems like all the new MMOs that are coming out, except for maybe Pantheon, is putting really deep PVP systems in. I don't know if that's the feedback that they're getting from the community or, or what. It's kind of kind of interesting. I'm willing to try it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Or I wonder if you can just not participate in the PVP stuff. I suppose that's always an option, but when you look at something like Ashes of Creation, it's like you can, you know, with, with sort of like you and your community that you're with can literally spend all this time building a city and then an enemy player group can come in and essentially destroy it. It's not like something that can just like happen, you know, like super quick. It's something that would happen over time. But, yeah, it could be just a thing that you don't participate in. And again, I guess you take a look at something like Star Wars Galaxies. I know, guys. I could talk about it all day. So, Galaxies was actually pretty heavily PvP-focused as well. And you could totally just not participate in it. It was fine. Because I've told you guys the stories before on how you know the, the group that I was with the town that we had built was rebel based and that we would have Imperials come and attack our town and stuff like that but at least they couldn't destroy the physical buildings in galaxies but if you had any rebel 
bases set up, like the bases, the turrets, you could have NPCs in your town. They, they could destroy all that, but not like your actual town, your actual buildings, your homes and stuff like that. Where, again, like Ashes of Creation, they can literally burn your entire city, houses, everything to the ground. Now, you don't actually lose any of your things. You, If your house gets burned down or whatever, it just goes into your inventory, but... Yeah, it's just it's interesting that these that these new MMOs are so heavily focused at, at PvP. But yeah, it looks like New World is kind of along the same lines, but in the end we definitely need more more info, I think. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it actually releases this year and hopefully it's good. Hopefully they've learned from their mistakes. And and you know what? I, I said this a while back that what happened with Cyberpunk has has changed the, the gaming industry. Every developer saw what happened with that game. And of course, you know, No Man's Sky and, and other ones like it. And they're like, okay, we cannot release these unfinished games. We cannot release games that are super super buggy you know and just on uh, you know so forth and so on so hey mikey how's it going and the other thing to kind of remember about that is when you take a look at something like wildstar uh wildstar was promoted as a super hardcore uh mmo like the the top of the top players, the best of the best, you know, in the rating and, and all that stuff. And then that, that game launched and it failed because it turns out nobody actually wanted that. Or at least not that many. But that was one of Wildstar's downfalls. So hopefully the Amazon people are smart enough to look at that and make changes it was definitely interesting uh, like I mentioned earlier that they did the the whole thing about letting people stream it like months and months ago it was like it, I think last August or something like that they let people stream that game and they got so much feedback I mean, when you look at something like SOTOR, you guys have probably heard, you know, Musco and Charles Boyd straight up say that when it comes to SOTOR, most people have only created one character. Now, I feel like there's some craziness behind that number because it's like literally everyone I know has created more than one character. So I, I really wonder whenever they whenever they say that stat, which they've said multiple times on stream, I wonder if that's free to play people checking out the game for the first time. They roll one character and then they end up leaving the game most likely or truly just sticking with that one character because they're free to play and they feel like they don't have enough options. I feel I feel like that's probably what actually has happened. But any anybody who plays Sotor to any degree has many many characters. And I think that that's the same for any MMO, right? You look at something like World of Warcraft and most people in World of Warcraft probably do not raid and probably do not PVP. So I, it just it puzzles me a little bit on why these new MMOs are so heavily PvP focused. You look at something like Black Desert Online, which is very heavily PvP focused, and I the game is doing okay. Actually, do we have sh uh, stats for that? Hold on a second. What if I go to um, stats? 
steam charts. Black. Does it? No? Hold on. Ah, here we go. So right now, for Black Desert Online, there's 14,200 playing that game. The 24-hour peak is 17,779. The all-time peak is right at about 60,000. Now, I don't know if Black Desert has its own launcher, which is splitting up the esteem numbers. If it does not, then the peak all-time number for Black Desert is 60K. That's pretty low. Murat says, yes, they do. Okay, so we're probably only getting like half numbers then. But it's still pretty interesting. Actually, I haven't looked in a while. What are the SOTOR numbers on uh, Steam these days? Oh, I just can't type in SOTOR because that doesn't exist. SOTOR. Hmm. Currently playing an hour ago, right at about 7,000. The 24 hour peak was 9,500 for SOTOR. And then the all-time peak, which was, I think, two weeks after the Steam release, was 27,400. So currently for SOTOR in the last 30 days, uh, on Steam, SOTOR has lost 2.8% of its players. But funny enough, in January, SOTOR had a bit of a sp bike it says here and actually gained 28 percent uh average player base on steam so that's kind of interesting i always looking i always like looking at these numbers Yeah. Actually, I'm just going to bring this up on the screen here real quick since we're talking about it. Valheim's currently at 303,000. The peak today was 391,000. That game continues to blow up. Where's the... Okay, let me load this list here. I'm just going to load the top 10 here real quick and see what's going on. So CSGO, Valheim, Dota 2, Rust, Destiny 2, Apex. Actually, they just put Apex on Steam. And it's in sixth place. It's pretty good. Uh, TF2, Ark, Rocket League, and Rainbow Six Siege. Path of Exile still doing pretty good at 40k current players. Terraria, Stardew, Civ, Warframes up there. Skyrim. So here's here's ESO at 31. 19,003. Here's BDO. We're just kind of looking at MMOs. BDO at 14.8. City Skylines. Factorio. There's Hades. Sims 4, which is new. To um, Steam, that is. Borderlands 3, Halo. So here's here's Sotor right there, 90th. It's 
it's kind of it's kind of funny to be like all the games that are above Sotor on the list. There's Albion online at 96. Wow, actually, that No Man's No Man's Sky uh, numbers are way lower than what I thought it would be. That's actually interesting. Planet Zoo, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Vermintide. Is this the this this is the OG Battlefront 2 at 3000? Good old Darkest Dungeon. Eve Online at 23. Just looking to see if there's like any other MMOs here. Star Trek Online. 1900. We're getting pretty deep into the list at this point. All right, well, that's that's 250 chat. I think we'll stop at 250. Dota 2 never quits. No. I've never actually played Dota 2. I've played League of Legends, but not Dota 2. The Twitch client locked up on you? You know what? It's going to be really interesting. Ark is another game that I've never played. And they've already announced Ark 2. Starring Vin Diesel. I don't know how many of you guys saw that. And they're also doing a an arc animated series, which I think is on Netflix, with like an all star cast. So that game could like really blow up when Arc Two comes out. I mean, shoot, Arc One, you know, top ten. Arc is all over Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, and obviously that that's not even th these numbers here. These are just Steam numbers. But yeah, this one really surprised me, these Apex numbers. Because they just brought this over. Like, when? Hold on, let me, let me go to three months. Uh, let's go to a year. No, I can't. I, I can't even go back that far. When did it go online? I thought it was like here recently. Maybe it was longer than what I think it was. All along. Or was it, was it November 19th? What is this marker? Okay, I guess it must have been like November 19th. Huh, interesting. I really like Apex. Apex is my favorite battle royale. I haven't played it in months. I, I'd like to get back into it. But yeah, I, I, we need to we need to keep watching these numbers. Yeah, this this game has been live for like seven days or something like that. Maybe maybe a tad longer than that. What's this? February 9th? So, yeah, actually, maybe, oh, yo. Yeah. February 9th was what? A week ago today. That's crazy. Two million people have bought the game. But, yeah, 391,000 playing at the same time. Hmm. 
One of these days, I'll have to log in and check it out. But, anywho, chat. You guys ready for some more free Lancer? 